Well, the Prime Minister was asked about the Bloc Québécois deadline. Here's what we heard from Justin Trudeau, including what he had to say about talks with Yves-François Blanchet. Listen, over the past, uh, past number of weeks, I've had some very good conversations with Mr. Blanchet. Um, we agree as a party that we need to work on supporting vulnerable people and uh, doing more for our seniors. It's one of the reasons why we've been so enthusiastic about delivering dental care to so many seniors across the country. And we're going to continue to look for ways to help Canadians through these difficult times and work constructively with everyone in the House. Well, with his thoughts on this and other matters, we're now joined by Jean-Yves Duclos, Minister of Procurement and the Prime Minister's Quebec Lieutenant. Minister, thank you for coming here. Thank you, Michael, and hello to everyone listening. Yeah. So we just heard the Bloc say that they're going to start negotiating with the opposition parties uh, to bring your government down, and yet you call that an artificial threat. Does that mean you're not taking it seriously? I call it an artificial deadline because it's indeed an artificial deadline to fix today, the last day uh, after which they will be working for Quebecers and other Canadians. Now, there is no deadline that we have fixed for when we stop working for Canadians and Quebecers. So I find that to be very artificial, that on this particular day, they will not be working anymore for Quebecers. Mm -hmm. Artificial, but do you take the threat seriously that they're working with the opposition now? Well, we, we are working with the NDP and the Bloc, obviously, uh, less so with the Conservatives uh, since we've been uh, forming a minority government in 2021. That's the essence of a minority government. So, so despite this artificial deadline, I believe and I really hope that it will be possible to keep working with the Bloc and the NDP to do the, the things that Canadians ex expect of us to do. Mm -hmm. Except for the Bloc, it really does boil down to these two issues. The, the, the expansion of the OAS top-up to, to those that are 60, uh, 65 and over, uh, protecting the, the, the dairy industry, essentially, and farmers in your own province. Do you risk being on the wrong side of these issues in Quebec if you don't support what the Bloc is trying to push through? Uh, a, on supply management, we know is, is in the Senate. There is, they need a bit more time to proceed as, as uh, diligently as they can with the, the last step regarding the supply management bill, which will indeed protect farms in Quebec and elsewhere in Canada uh, in, the, in, in the face of the, the threats that we're seeing from abroad when it comes to supporting our family farms. On help to seniors, what, had been, what we've been saying to uh, Mr. Uh, Blanchet is that, yes, the intention is good, Good, but the, the bill that he is presenting is flawed. And the big, most important flaw is that this bill would give uh, couples like, he, like his couple and my couple, when we retire, more money, more additional support from the old age uh, security program than a vulnerable senior with, say, $25,000 would get alone. So that's not good. That's not fair. Vulnerable seniors need and deserve more support than people like me or Mr. Blanchet. Do people understand that, though? Because that, that, at the end of the day, is a technical argument that you're making. But when people are struggling financially, as they have been all across the country, Quebec included, does that type of argument have resonance to, to potential voters? Well, it's not a technical issue. It's a, a real issue that matters to how we can Except provide... Except that, you know, when people are struggling with affordability, they, they see the, the, the Bloc Québécois leader standing there and saying that what we're trying to do is put more money into your pocket, which is an easier message for people to understand. Maybe easier to communicate. It takes about half a sentence. But if you complete the sentence, you then end up understanding that what he would do is to give more money to more affluent seniors than to vulnerable seniors, which is not the right thing to do. Mm. Now, I, I do wonder, though, about how you and your, now that you're Quebec lieutenant, how the Quebec caucus of the Liberal Party is feeling right now. Because when you look at the numbers, uh, the Bloc Québécois is very much in the lead. Liberals right now in a uh, statistical tie with Conservatives. How united is the party right now, given these issues, given the, the ongoing issues about the Prime Minister's leadership and questions as to whether or not he should continue? There's an important difference between unity and unanimity. We'll never have unanimity in a Liberal caucus. We never, never had had unanimity in a Liberal caucus since I've been in the caucus uh, in, in 2015. And it's great that we're not always unanimous because the diversity of our views also comes from the diversity of our big and, 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 and great country. So that's important that every MP brings his or her perspective on how to support Canadians. And that rarely comes with unanimity. But there is a strong sense of unity because we know what's coming. 
we know what's coming. Pierre Foliev, he wants to cut, cut, and cut. All he, his ideology is always and completely around, around cuts, cuts for dental care, cuts on old age security, cuts on daycare, cuts on farmer care. He wants to cut everything, every possible thing that Canadians seem to depend on. That's not something which I believe Quebecers and hopefully other Canadians will approve at the next elections. Except that in Quebec, it's not the Conservatives who are right now leading the polls. It's the Bloc Québécois. What argument will you make to, to Quebecers that it should be the Liberals that they are supporting as opposed to the Bloc Québécois? Again, the Bloc Québécois put, putting up these very popular issues. Everyone in Quebec knows that the next federal government will not be a bloc, will not be a bloc Québécois government. There is only, only, only two possible governments after the next election. It's a liberal or conservative government. The bloc Québécois will not form the next federal government. So we have to choose as Quebecers which, we, which option we prefer. Is it the liberal option that you know, positive, optimistic and respectful? Or the politics of Pierre Polier, which is insults, lies and chaos, uh, which obviously falls from the south, but which I believe most Quebecers will not want to see in Canada. Mm -hmm. You know, as we talk about this, uh, of course, that's the next election. Right now, the business of the House is delayed because it's point of privilege from the Conservative Party. How much longer is your government willing to put up with this point of privilege before you either unite with other parties to try to put an end to it or prorogue Parliament? Well, this needs to stop because each day that the House of Commons spends discussing this silly motion of the Conservatives costs a lot of money to Canadians. That has to stop. We are in a minority government. It will stop only when the NDP and the Bloc work with us to move to things that matter to Canadians. Now, the, the, the Conservatives uh, keep spending all of their time and Canadians' money on that silly motion, which is blocking the, uh, the, the important work of the House of Commons. We really hope that it's going to end very soon. But are you in negotiations right now with other opposition parties to, to have it come to an end soon? Yes, we are discussing the, with the opposition parties, the Bloc and the NDP, as to when and how we're going to end that silly uh, behavior on the part of the Conservatives. Okay. You know, before we're done, I also want to talk about advance requests for medically assisted death, because as you know, the, the province of Quebec will be moving ahead with it as of tomorrow. People can start requesting it. but. Of course, that's not where the legislation is out right now. And your consultations, uh, the ones that have been announced by your government, will begin in November. Are you too late to the game that you are beginning consultations after Quebec is basically going to allow the procedure to, to go forward? Uh, two things on that. First, it's, it's, as we all know, it's important to repeat that this is a very personal thing that m each Canadian has the right to see differently in his family, with himself. So this is all very personal and, and sensitive. The second thing is that we have moved um, in the right manners. People sometimes feel it's been too prudent, others feel it's been too fast. We've been moving over the last eight years on making sure that people can live and die in dignity and according to their own will. But that is a difficult path to follow because we want to protect the, the, the dignity and the free choice, the free will of people. We also need to protect those that may be vulnerable in those specific uh, circumstances. We're not yet ready uh, in the federal government to change the criminal code on this particular aspect. We need to have, to have more work and more conversations with Canadians, including on caregivers and, and, and many others that also care, uh, care very deeply about the right of everyone to live and to die in dignity. But you're not, to my understanding, challenging what Quebec is doing in, at the court level. Are you giving up the responsibility to Quebec? No, what we're not doing is to sue Quebec in court. Uh, bec the reason that we're not doing that is that we need more time to determine what is the right path to follow for the Even fellow Even if it's gun. violating the law as it stands right now. So we're not suing the Quebec government uh, as we now speak because we need more time to know how, what path we will be uh, following. We know there are uh, increasingly um, important views heard across Canada, obviously in, including in Quebec, views that say that there, are, there is a path to follow uh, to proceed with these, uh, these advanced determinations of medical aid in dying, but done in the right way. We still need more time to find what that right way uh, would be. Okay. Well, unfortunately, we don't have more time. I'd like to go on, but Minister, thank you very much for speaking with us this evening. Thank you, Michael, and have a great day, everyone.